Look, okay, this is Jamie Lee. Dave. Not He's impressed. Humans. <laughs> humans. He's all eye penny. He's all eyeballs right He's now. He's all flashy. Yeah. And you can try showing him the tree just to kind of remind him and then see if he is interested in uh, showing him, not oh, giving, giving him. him. <laughs> Here you go My for bad. nothing. My bad. Freebie. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Look, that was delicious. You ready? Look, yeah, I learned I gotta do nothing. He touched it, technically. He did, it I saw it. <laughs> Come on. Come on. look at like what weight what foot he's weighted on it's like right now he's got most of it there but you know whichever you prefer bigger reward see how much easier your arm position is on that height it's lower. Mm -hmm. yeah let me say hi hi yeah that's a good boy Are you cold? <laughs> <laughs> so I see a couple of things that we can clean up really easily, really fast. Um, and I want you to think of training as a new language that you're speaking with the animal. And what you took a picture of was this. And what you wanted was a picture of this, as high as he could get it. I understand. And that was specifically the side that you had said he's not as good at. Yeah. But then also, if you pair that with clicking at the wrong time, that might be the answer to why you've been struggling with that behavior. Okay. So the solution of that is that if he's too resistant, uh, too resistant, we need to change something. So if we take the opportunity away, it could be I put him on the other perch, thinking since he's not familiar with it, that could help solicit a flight. Um, we could start to then look at a flat surface to have him fly from. Alaska's <laughs> like, what just happened? <laughs> That was um, a half a sunflower seed. Perfect. Come here, Dad. Nice. Oh, poor Laska. <laughs> can I, should I just move You can move her. So she's a little bit you more comfortable. This table's going to feel a little yeah. more safe. Yeah. <laughs> 
so I'm gonna ask you. That didn't click. click. I shouldn't have clicked. I know I shouldn't have clicked. Yeah, but you did, so you, did. you do owe a cream. I do. Okay, so catch, don't click, don't click, reset. And this time run to your spot faster. Okay. Get ready to recall me. Come here, Dad. Awesome. And let's pause on that one. I want to show you uh, one of the concepts that we're working with. I'll, I'll show the first part here. So typically, this is something that I want you to clean up. When you have the chopstick in your hand, and you can have a seat. Okay, thank you. you can relax. When you have the chopstick in your hand, and you have the treat pouch on, when you enter into his bubble, he knows that, that it's going to be training time, right? And so when you're in his bubble and you have the stick, it's important that you're re relaxing it and it's not a constant cue. Mm. So there's a lot of times you're juggling different things and you're constantly cueing him with the target stick without realizing it. So as I was saying, like, let's clean up that language. That means you've done the behavior and just get that out and then give the treat. Okay. That'll help a lot. Now you'll notice that's when you're in his bubble. When we moved him to an uncomfortable position, you were still in his bubble and he was comfortable. But the moment that you stepped outside, when I was like, hey, did you see his body language change? Yeah. So for him, it was like a 20 foot circle. It wasn't until you got to right around this area that he finally was like, wait, you're too far. And so that we use that to help get that first flight. So when we're dealing with bird training, usually we try to use just positive reinforcement, meaning just the treats. But oftentimes we become so hyper-focused on just the food, we forget about the other 50% of the equation, which is the environment. So what we did in that situation to get the best, the best likelihood for a flight, there's this unpublished circle. So when I'm talking about being within that circle, when you're in here, he's engaged and he's ready to train. When you stepped outside of it, in your case, this was like, we'll call it 20 feet. As soon as you hit 20 feet, his posture changed to like, I'm no longer rewarded by your presence. So think of, think of it this way. Half the reinforcement streets, the other half's environment. If, if I'm in his circle, he's now 50% reinforced because I'm here. So I better have a really good treat. Versus now, I'm outside of his circle. His food motivation's right. And I'm no longer in his environment, the other 50%, 100% of the reinforcement has to be now over here where I am. So oftentimes those first repetitions in a new environment or not in a new environment, you have to look at the whole picture and really set the room up for, uh, set yourself up for success by looking at the room and saying, okay, the, um, if I move to a different perch, is being on a on a less comfortable perch going to solicit a flight. No, okay, now let's go to a countertop because we know he probably doesn't like the countertop. No, he's still okay with that. Let's increase the distance. In the beginning, you were really close, but he was still comforted yeah. until you got further distance. And so you add these little things until you get that flight. Well, so far what I'm seeing is just the need for really cleaning up your training. Yeah. And so I actually have a flight student right now where he was measuring the level of his success by how far back he could get. And he's getting further and further but the responsiveness was going away. And the bird is fully capable of doing ascending and descending flights of a really tall roof at their place or ceilings. Um, so his, his work this week actually specifically is flights about this far and it's only to clean up his handling. And rather than measuring his results by how far back he's getting, I had to re redefine in his mind that no, the success is if you try five times and you get five flights. But if you stand here and you ask 10 times and you only get one flight, then you're doing something wrong when you do adjust. And so think of like, in his case, that was all about having a good read on the bird, being set up for success by being the right distance to be most likely to the flight. It might be here, it might be, oh, there it is, right? So that's the distance to do the flight training from. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's just like, I think for you picking one specific thing to work on, kind of seeing in your head what that's gonna look like and then go execute that. Think of, if you had 99 out of 100 perfect repetitions, how much more beneficial that is than getting 500 repetitions in, but only 300 were perfect. Right. And we just want like, just do five perfect ones. That has everything to do with like my gesturing and clicker timing and like calling. Everything, yeah, so. Um, and the bubble. 
<laughs> it's it's <laughs> just like and, yeah. <laughs> which is why he's trying to simplify and just have you think of one thing, one thing to just kind of like even you could pass the clicker off to Dave, so you don't have to worry about the clicker. All you do is have the treats and Q and watch his body language. That's it. And that's it. You know, we yeah. want to simplify this so that we can then put on the layers and that it's no big deal because everything else is just so dialed in. So think of think of your gestures. It's you know we're forming this new language of training. So it's important that the language is spoken super clear. And so um, we sound a certain way here. But if we go talk to somebody in Alabama, it's gonna, they're going to sound way different, right? <laughs> from now Are you from Alabama? Oh, way to choose your state. Oklahoma. Uh, <laughs> I, I agree, though. Right. So, so we can safely say there's an accent, right? And if you're not used to that accent, it can be hard to understand at first, especially the thicker it gets, right? Um, and we can say Wisconsin, right? Like, okay. <laughs> wherever, wherever you're going, there's going to be two different accents. And right now, if Jamie and I both were training D'Artagnan, we would give a cue with what I would refer to as an accent. I might wave. I might teach the wave where I'm holding the treat and I'm waving like this. Jamie might do it like this and have the treat here. The birds can eventually figure out we're saying the same thing, but it sounds or looks different. It's an accent. And what I'm seeing with your training is that every time you're, and I'm, slightly over exaggerating this, but most of the time that you are giving the cue, it's in a new accent. And so we just want to take, like strip everything, simplify it, and then give you like five perfect repetitions that are crystal clear. And I think you're gonna see a huge improvement just based on that. But I can see your minds like trying to process too much at once. And so we'll simplify those steps for you. Okay. <laughs> okay, so yeah, let's go that route. But before you pick them up and put them over there, I want you to to really think through and visualize what what will it look like. You need to get five perfect flights. Okay. Let's see if he's receptive at halfway and just really look for his body language. Okay. Um, then look for body language that looks like he wants to fly. And then if he looks like he wants to fly, then go ahead and call him. I'll do all the clicking for you. Okay. And, and all you have to do is reward him, call the right time, and reward him when he lands on you. Okay. What's his body language? He's like, he yeah. just started going towards it. Did he get a treat? Oh, no. <laughs> you yeah. had one job! <laughs> <laughs> I gotta interrupt you. That last time he flew right before you called him, this time try to beat him to the flight. Okay. Meaning call him before he <laughs> Where are you going? I just want to clean this up so he doesn't, he's like paying attention to what we're doing. Okay. Yeah, this thing's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so no treat, just reset him. This time walk backwards instead of turning your back to him. Or like run backwards. If there's good. Come here, dog. What should you change? I, I want to turn around. But... I think that's a great idea. Thank you. <laughs> 20, 20 seconds that you gave the cue. So you heard it as the cue just being his name. This is a much more distinct cue form than the vocal cue. So keep in mind that just like calling, if you were to call him 10 times, it would be more obvious that like he's ignoring your cue or you're weakening the cue. But what's less obvious is that you were calling him for 23 seconds with your hand out. So make that less. So, exactly. Because okay. you wouldn't call him 23 times. No. But you were, in essence, by having your hand up that long. Uh... Right? So, think of it like this. You'll put your hand out at the same time you get the verbal cue. Okay. That'll help you clean that How up. How long would you recommend that I hold my hand before I turn around again? Um, depends on the body language. So three to five seconds maybe. Okay. And then if that's uh, if that's not working, then I might have you step this direction. Okay. But right now he looks ready, so when you're ready, go and turn around and kill him. Okay. Come here, Dark.
This time we're going to go uh, over by Jamie almost, just yep, in line. Okay, you can turn and look at him. So you're queuing already. So you can lower your hand. We're going to wait for body language. It shows us that he looks like he's ready to go. By me, as I start to get closer, you're going to notice his body language change. I want you to try to pair your hand and your verbal cue. Uh, when he looks like I'm making him slightly uncomfortable okay. and he wants to fly to you. Okay. Yep. Come here, Dark. I was, nice. I was so close. Could, you could see it shifting, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden it was real fast. Yeah. So this time I won't do it. I don't have to. And did you give a treat on that? You can give a treat on the table if you want. Just run. Run, 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 and call. So no treat. We'll reset them. Hello. 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 Hey, Jamie, was her hand up before he flew? Okay, so. One more time. I'll, I'll get it. I'll get it. Actually. Um, I'll do it. <laughs> 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 that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got nothing on my ninja moves. Come here, Dar. Oh, oh man. Oh. Creeper vibes. Okay, so hand down. Wait, no. So catch him. Okay, so we're going to start having to get upset. So this one, go ahead and set him down. Just make it super short and easy. So he doesn't get Okay. Right there. Stop. Get there, there. Come here, dog. That's exciting now. Okay, now we can go a little further back and just walk past the tip. No. We barely got that, but did you, yeah. Jamie saw it. Did you see right where where that transition happened? Yeah, right where he kind of like he's like, "Who are you going?" Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's kind of that bubble that I'm talking about, and his seems to be shrinking and expanding based on a lot of the other outside elements today. Mm -hmm. um, but those are all things that that you will have to really start to tune into, because a couple of times you couldn't get to hear without him coming after you. Right. That one of the things that was consistent with that is it was when your back was turned, which would be consistent with you're leaving for good, right? In your home, you're leaving the room because your back is turned, that's a cue. When your back's turned to him, his time, his interactions finish, you're going to the other room. So he has to make a correction to come after you, um, which I think is what you were reading is like when she was running that quickly. I think that may have cont uh, contributed to that. Um, so he felt inclined to follow you Versus when you went this way, he didn't do it as quickly because you were still engaged with him. Mm -hmm. So just kind of pay attention to, again, talking about accents. If every time we reset, we're doing this, we're not going to get to reset very far. If we're resetting by walking backwards, now he knows he's still engaged in training and he's going to be waiting for your cue versus, like, keeping up with the flock. Yeah. Can you see from that session how, how many different spots we can clean? just in a recall session alone? Yeah. Oh. Come here, Dark.
Come here, Dad. Perfect. That was really good job reading him. I changed my clicker timer a lot intentionally, which I can explain <laughs> afterwards. Come here, Dad. That was awesome. I wish that this camera was wide enough to see everything. The second you turn your back, his body language changed to like, oh no, I blew it. <laughs> I lost the opportunity. Um, yeah, that, that was good. We got two more. Come here, baby. Come here, Dad. Good. Awesome. Woohoo! That clicks for you, and I would stop. I there. would end. <laughs> so the goal was five. We were starting to lose them on the third one. Still got a solid one on the fourth one. In in the real world, I for sure would want you to stop there. In this scenario, you know, we're trying to push to as far as we can, and we also wouldn't push beyond where we just did. And I can see that you're seeing when he changes, and that, like, if we play that video compared to the first flights, mm -hmm. it's a totally different trainer. Cool. And this is what we need to see more of. Okay. Uh, yeah, you were a lot more relaxed now where you're just having to focus on like one or two things versus, you know, juggling all the things yeah. you had in the very beginning. All the things. <laughs> all the things. All the things that happen in my mind. Mm. <laughs> I think I'm just repeating myself, but, but do five perfect repetitions and really, I think for you, clearing your mental space and knowing exactly what you're going to do before you start is going to help. And I'm learning watching you too, right? So there's one instance towards our last set of repetitions where I thought I had got you to like, all right, here's exactly what I'm gonna do. And you set D'Artagnan down, turn your back, and then started to tell a story about something. And meanwhile, he was like, he was in training mode and then we were starting to lose that. And so that's a really good contrast to the last session where you knew exactly what you wanted to do. You were hyper-focused and you just did that and it was so much better. I wanna see more of that. Mm -hmm. And so obviously when you're at home and not as distracted by people and have questions about stuff, it's going to look a lot cleaner, but, but you know, kind of the same note, make sure that your handling is the same, your cue's crystal clear, you're not over-cueing by having your hand out too long and by having those five perfect reps, Again, if you only if you only did 500 perfect repetitions before going outside, that's going to look way better than out of 500 attempts, you had 200 that were pretty good, right? So it's not always about the quantity of the repetitions, and that's why I like to keep it down. And the last set only being four, now you kind of can feel what we were feeling and learn to stop there, where he's... He's, I don't think he's pushed too far out of the skill level to do this distance of flights, so this is where my my information is going to kind of contradict what I said for you, where it was like, end on something easy. I think for you, it's just really pay attention to what his body language looks like and don't go beyond where you know you can get those recalls. All right. A huge thanks, thanks to... What am I supposed to do? You're supposed to just stand there and look cute. <laughs> You're doing a good job. You sound nervous. Yeah. Is my voice shaking? A little bit. <laughs> yeah. All right. A huge thanks to Snake Discovery for hosting our masterclasses this weekend and introducing us to some of their amazing critters. Check them out in the video description below. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sweating. Yes. laughs> <I'm sweating. laughs>